everyone, thanks for joining me. You're watching In Deep on the Delta. This is the weekly Delta fishing report for the week of October 13th. I'm gonna find a nice little place to tuck in, take a little break here, and we'll get right into the report. And I wanna start off with river news, and uh, I wanna remind everybody that the Food Allergy Kayak Bass Fishing Tournament set for October 29th that was at uh, set to be at Clear Lake is now moved to Pardee Reservoir. Still on October 29th, Pardee Reservoir, the Food Allergy Bass Kayak Fishing Tournament. For you guys that want to fish it and you need more information, just Google up Food Allergy Bass Fishing Kayak Tournament. It'll take you right to their website and it will give you all the information. It's a $35 entry fee. It's going to be a great tournament. There's lots of great prizes. I'm hoping to be up there, so I hope to see all you guys up there. So that's the first, uh, first line of business. Um, River news. I, I guess on a sad note, I'm going to have to announce, you guys know my partner, Ted. Ted's been on on uh, a couple of videos with me. We're out here fishing. He helped me with the report a couple weeks ago. I'm sad to say that, Ted, you are banned from the boat for one week. And the reason being, he's been sending me pictures all week of these big fish that he's catching. I've had a really tough time out here this week. And uh, I'm frankly, I'm getting a little tired of it. So three things have to happen. Either I have to start catching fish, you've got to stop catching fish, or you've got to call me and invite me out and show me what you're doing on how you're catching these fish. So, Ted, no soup for you for one week. We'll talk later. All right, river river news, that's about it. Uh, let's get into uh, water conditions, then we'll get into the stripers and the largemouth bass report. And water conditions out here are perfect. 68 to 72 degrees, depending on where you're at, around five feet of visibility. Everything looks good. We've had a gentle breeze. We've had a couple days have ha, we've had no breeze. That's made the fishing even a little tougher, but the breeze is nice. We're not getting blown off the water out here. Everything looks good, but boy, uh, at least the largemouth bass, they just have not been responding. So we're going to see what happens. I mean, last week we had great tidal coefficients, a lot of water coming through, and uh, it just didn't perk up the largemouth bass bite. But we'll get into that in a, minute, in a minute, and we will talk about the one bright spot that we have had this week. And there are more and more stripers coming into the system and they're spread out they're not you know the, the big slug of them I wouldn't say is is in the in the main Delta right now or the central Delta there's a lot of them still out from Pittsburgh big break um, Decker Island you know coming in they're, they're just they're on the outsides moving in there are fish scattered throughout the system but there's going to be more and more the last couple weeks people have been catching fish and this week I've got a lot of reports from, from more and more angli anglers that are catching fish, and they're spread out. So if you're a weekend angler, I think your best bet right now is to drift live bait, either go out and buy yourself some shiners or catch some uh, sunfish. Drift them around in, in the moving water, uh, in the island cuts, uh, around Frank's track. Uh, you know, if you're out farther, you guys know the areas out there, you know, move around till you find the fish and you should do pretty well. If you are uh, fishing largemouth bass and you want to do a multi-species trip, just stick to a lot of jerk baits and, um, and uh, uh, lipless, uh, um, you know, rattle traps and things like that. And you will, uh, you'll catch your, your share of fish. Now, fishing those smaller bass baits, the fish are going to be smaller. They're probably going, you're going to get a lot of undersized fish. You'll catch a few schooly fish. For those of you who are in the know, uh, in fishing big glide baits and big striper baits and, and that's your thing you guys are catching fish it, you're catching the bigger fish and uh, that's been you know pretty consistent there are a lot of good fish in the system uh, very quality 8 to 12 pound fish there's a lot of schoolies like I said if you're using smaller baits like rattle traps you're gonna get a lot of schoolies and a lot of small fish you can use in the bigger glide baits you'll get bigger fish and if you use a live bait you're gonna get a good variety of uh, of both. It's looking real good. There's going to be more and more fish coming into the system and we're hoping for a great striper year. I didn't get a chance to talk to Jeff Suhu this week. I know he's been out there. He's been drifting live bait and I know he's been catching fish but I'll talk to Jeff next week and maybe get some information on what he's looking for and where most of the stripers are kind of holding. So that'll be next week. All right into the largemouth bass and what a mess this has been. The last couple weeks it's been tough. Uh, I last week thought that it was going to perk up with the, uh, the big tidal coefficients and the, the new moon and everything and it just didn't happen. I talked to uh, Rob from out at the bass hole and you know Rob talks to a lot of fishermen and Rob's kind of the mayor of Bethel Island out there. He talks to all levels of fishermen and he talks to some very good fishermen and I asked him what 
what's going to what's going to have to happen for this bike to kick in and you know nobody knows right now it would be my guess that you know because that water temperature is still around 70 72 degrees it's going to take some cool weather to drop that temperature consistently from about 66 to 68 when that happens boy i sure hope this bike kicks in because I, i've been waiting for it and it's just not happening for a lot of people and i i, I will talk about uh the bbt tournament that was last week and this is just it was a it was a very difficult tournament as far as weights go and it has nothing to do with the anglers the bb you might see you know the bbt is a is a amateur circuit but they have some very good anglers some very experienced anglers and a lot of the anglers that fish bbt cash checks in every circuit up and down the uh the west coast so it's not the anglers it was just tough fishing 20 i think 44 pounds won the two-day tournament uh, there were all out and there was about 150 boats just shy of 150 boats there were only three 20 pound bags weighed in for two days the top 10 had pretty decent weights uh, i forget what cash to check in it but right around mid level around that 70 50 to 70 guys were struggling to put five fish limits in the boat i think the second day half the field did not put a limit in the boat and they were getting about eight to ten pounds a day and that just isn't going to do it here on the delta that is tough tough fishing and i congratulate the guys that were out there struggling and, and and you know fished hard for two days for for very poor results obviously the guys that were in the top 10 congratulations to you i know it's it's tough when you're out there you know you make it to the toc and it just doesn't happen for a lot of you guys and you know that's just bass fishing but man you guys hit a tough day so with that um you know, I'm getting, I, I got very few reports. It was a three day weekend, so a lot of guys were out there. I figured I'd start getting a lot of reports. I got very few reports this week, but uh, one of the reports from Mike, who is, a, who is a weekly contributor, he pretty much summed it up. He had a couple tough days out here, and what he did was he found some deep water. He took his anchor rope, tied up all his gear, and threw it overboard. That's his solution to the fishing. Unfortunately, a couple days later, he sent me some information, said that he was ready to go fishing again. He was uh, on his way out to buy some new gear. So, unfortunately for Mike, he made a hasty decision, but that's what I think a lot of us have felt um, like doing this week. So, what have I been doing and what can I tell you? Number one, I have been out very early. I have been out very late, and neither one of them has really paid off for me. I can tell you that the evening bite, for me, has been much better than the morning bite. I've been using wake baits, primarily wake baits, and I'm fishing for bigger fish, and I'm not catching bigger fish. I'm getting five or six bites, uh, and the fish are maybe up to three pounds, and that's the best I can do for either the morning bite or the evening bite. So if you're coming out here and want to get up early or stay late, I would say stay late. But, you know, I wanted to just say I fish the right tides. I fish good moving water. I fish jerk baits, very few fish. I fished a few crankbaits, I fished worms, I was punching. Everything basically for me paid off at about the same rate. So, you know, uh, I have no, I, I'm a little bit frustrated this week. I'm hoping that next week will be better. And, and I really don't, I, I can't tell you what would, what you, what you could have done last week to catch fish. Everybody, everybody struggled. Let's put that behind us. What are we going to do next week? Okay, tidal coefficients are going to be terrible. There's not going to be a lot of water movement. I would suggest staying near flooded islands, staying near cuts in, in Thule Islands, staying around Frank's Track, where you know you have the greatest movement of water. Because the coefficients aren't going to be very good, you're going to have to really struggle to find that moving water. So that would be one. As far as the baits you're going to use, I would say, you know, go with your... Go with your, 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 your confidence baits. There are guys catching fish on worms. And I would say if you're just trying to catch fish, uh, stick, a, stick with a worm, a, uh, uh, maybe a wacky worm, a drop shot, um, a small T-rig, and, and maybe a, a jerk bait. Uh, the topwater bite just hasn't been... Every now and then somebody says they catch a few on topwaters, but it's not consistent. Stick with your jerk baits. Crankbaits have not been quite as consistent in the last week or so. I, I don't know why, but uh, jerkbaits and lipless rattle traps are doing pretty well. And if you throw in a rattle trap, you got a chance to catch some stripers. Stay in the moving water. 
and you know uh, pay attention to the tides and the moon phase do everything you can to put the um, uh, you know the odds in your favor but I'm predicting it's going to be pretty tough this week oh. that's how my week has been going so we talked about what you guys could do uh, for the next week look for moving water you know throw throw your jerk baits throw your rattle traps throw your worms I do have a, a tip of the week for you and I want you guys to think about this when you're out there and it might help you and all these little tips it's not going to take you from eight pounds to twenty pounds you got to put together lots and lots of little tips in order to go from eight to nine to ten to twelve to fourteen pounds you got to move up the ladder but the tip of the week for me is check out not the water clarity the the visibility in the water it's all going to be about five or six feet but look and see if you can start telling the difference between the greenish color waters and the brown waters and these aren't obviously the exact colors but you know what I mean the greenish color over here would be the color that you find when you have a lot of um, vegetation in the water it almost takes on the color of the vegetation the brown colors would be when you have a lot of wind and it's stirring up the bottom and it's kind of that muddy color. So here's my tip of the week. When you have the green colored water, stick with baits that have a little bit of chartreuse in it. Now this is a, a, a really chartreuse bait here. You don't have to go this far, but if you are using a jerk bait, hopefully you can see this little line of, um, of uh, uh, of chartreuse. I don't know if you can see that or not. Hopefully you can. Just get a little chartreuse on your bait when you're fishing the greener water. If you are fishing the brown color water, I would stick with crawdad type colors. And again, you don't have to go with a, you know, you can go with different types of, of reds and blacks. Um, you can mix them up a little bit, but in this brownish color water here, stick with crawdad type colors. If you have super crystal clear water where it's 8 to 10, 12 feet, I would drop all of the colors and stick with something like this, a crankbait or jerkbait, whatever you're throwing, that's a very muted color and not a lot of shine. You don't want to be throwing, uh, you know, in that clear water, you don't want to be throwing a lot of very shiny baits. Uh, it puts the fish off, at least for the largemouth bass. So that would be my tip of the week. And man, let's hope something comes up here. You know, either the water temperature uh, drops down a little bit, the fish kick in or something. But man, I wish I could tell you more, but uh, hopefully you guys will stick with me. Something's going to happen, good or bad. And when it does, I'll let you guys know. So with that, I want to thank everyone for, for watching. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Uh, make sure you guys are sending me the reports, even if you're not catching fish. I still want to know what you're doing, and it uh, gives me an idea of uh, who's, you know, what's going on out here. So thanks for watching, and we will see you guys next week.